Okay, now this is a quick overview of uh, the differences between diffusion and osmosis. Now let's look at some real examples in our body to help you understand these two processes. Um, so first we're gonna look at diffusion. There are some common molecules that definitely diffuse across the cell membranes. I only have two groups of molecules here, but of course there's more. So the first uh, group of molecules that perform a simple diffusion in our body is a lipid. Cholesterol, some hormones, lipid-based hormones like sex hormones secreted by the testes and ovaries. These are hormones, once they're secreted, they're transported by the blood, right? And how do they get into the cells to affect the cells? They can simply diffuse into the cells from higher concentration to low concentration, right? So when you think about this, uh, let's say estrogen, molecules, right? So they're carried, they're transported by bloodstream. In the bloodstream, estrogen is at a higher concentration than what's in the cell, right? So estrogen is lipophilic or hydrophobic. If you remember the term hydrophobic, that means estrogen fears water it does not dissolve in water very easily. So because of the hydrophobic nature of estrogen, it can cross the cell membrane freely. So when you have a concentration gradient, high in the blood and low in the cell, then these molecules can just diffuse, right? They will just move freely into the interstitial fluid, you know, the, the space between the cell and the blood vessel, and then they diffuse into the cell. Okay, so that's a good example of simple diffusion. Now, I just want to remind everyone one important thing. So normally in our body, hydrophobic molecules can cross the cell membrane freely, right? They don't need any help. And that's because the cell membrane is mostly hydrophobic. When you look at this diagram of a cell membrane, it's a phospholipid bilayer. These beads, these are phosphate head. And they are hydrophilic. Hydrophilic, that means they like water. But other than the phosphate heads, the majority of the cell membrane, which is mostly these uh, fatty acid tails, they are hydrophobic. They're lipid, right, essentially. So they prefer lipid molecules. They prefer hydrophobic molecules that are just like them, right? So for uh, cholesterol, for lipid-based hormones, they can cross the cell membrane very easily. So their transport into the cell is just based on simple diffusion. Now, another group of molecules that can diffuse um, through the cells very easily is gas molecules. So we have CO2, we have oxygen. So these gas molecules don't carry any charge. So they don't really like water that much because they themselves have no charge, right? They're neither negative or positive. So they, um, so they're very different than water. They don't like water. They don't dissolve in water very well. So this means that they can cross the hydrophobic cell membrane very easily. And this really kind of creates the foundation of our survival, right? So that the cells in our body can get oxygen um, and they get rid of carbon dioxide. Right? Now, talking about these gas molecules, let's look at the diffusion of these molecules at body tissues first, and then we'll look at their diffusion at lungs. Now, I want to point out that this topic is in T7, so it's a very important topic. At body tissues, you can see that these are these uh, orange blocks, those are cells. So we can see two tissue cells uh, on the left. And then we have blood vessels, which is over here. And then there is a one red blood cell on this picture. Now, at tissue levels, 
the blood that's coming in is oxygenated blood. So it's a high in oxygen and oops and low in carbon dioxide. Now when you look at the tissue cells, they are the opposite, right? Because they have been doing metabolism, they respirate, they generate a lot of carbon dioxide and they consume a lot of oxygen. So they are low in oxygen, but high in carbon dioxide, okay? So you can see that these differences in gas concentrations, now usually gas concentrations are expressed as pressure, which you probably see in textbooks. But just for simplicity, I'm just gonna keep using the term concentration for these gas molecules. So you can see now there's a concentration. So these gas molecules, because they can cross all those membranes freely, they're just gonna diffuse, right? Let me use a different color. So the oxygen is gonna move from high to low, right? From red blood cells across the capillary wall, across the interstitial fluid, across the tissue cell membrane into the cells. And then carbon dioxide is gonna be doing the opposite direction. Carbon dioxide is gonna move out of the cell, across the cell membrane, across the interstitial fluid, across the capillary wall, and into the red blood cells. So this is what's going on at body tissues. This is how gas exchange is achieved at body tissues. It's so critical, right, for our survival, but it's just really based on a simple principle, which is diffusion. Now, you can probably guess what happens at the lungs, right? So let me draw some structures, and then we'll um, look at the direction of a gas movement. Remember at, at the lungs, we have a lot of these alveoli, right? Each one of these, these uh, air sacs, those are alveoli. And I have one drawn in here. Okay, so alveoli will receive whatever you breathe in, right? So when you breathe in, there's a lot of oxygen coming in. So in alveoli, it's high in oxygen and it's low in carbon dioxide. The blood that comes into the lungs, it's going to be deoxygenated. And that's because the, the blood has gone through ga gas exchange at tissue levels, right? So it picks up a lot of carbon dioxide from the cells and it unloads a lot of oxygen, right? It gives a lot of oxygen to the cells. So it's a high in carbon dioxide, but low in oxygen. So again, now you have a concentration gradient for those gas molecules. So they're just gonna diffuse, right? They're gonna move from high concentrations to low concentrations. So what happens at the lungs is that the oxygen is going to leave alveoli into the blood, into the red blood cells. And the carbon dioxide is going to leave the red blood cells, right, cross the capillary walls, cross the walls of the alveoli into the air space, right? So this is how carbon dioxide moves. And as you can imagine, at the end of uh, gas exchange at the lungs, we have oxygenated blood again, right? Because oxygen moves into the blood, uh, carbon dioxide comes out of the blood, right? So now you have the good blood again. All right, so this is a gas exchange at the lungs. Hopefully with this quick overview, whenever you see questions about diffusion, especially uh, related to gas exchange, you can answer the questions correctly.